Welcome back. The director of the Waterley Correctional Facility is firing back at claims and even concerns that his leadership style at the facility is too lenient and relaxed. The claims came after Hilary Herman decided to take a backseat approach on a matter involving inmates at the prison using a phone to live stream their frustrations on Facebook at the beginning of February this year. Herman says whilst he has nothing to prove to anyone, his goal is to rehabilitate prisoners, not treat them like animals. Inmates at the Borderlay Correctional Facility at the beginning of February shocked social media users when they held a live stream on Facebook for nearly an hour complaining about the conditions at the facility. Mobile phones are on the list of contraband at the facility and so questions were raised as to how the inmates were not only able to have access to a phone and mobile services but also how inmates were allowed to live stream for so long without the intervention of correctional officers. Eyebrows were raised further when the director of the BCF, Hilary Herman, revealed that he was aware of the incident. However, due to officers being outnumbered, it was better that they chose to allow the inmates to vent. This statement brought Herman's leadership skills into question and whether he was too soft to be in charge of a prison. Whilst appearing as a guest on Wednesday's Hot Seat on Hot 7 TV, the Army veteran said he is not bothered by the questions over his strength as a leader. I am not in the business of proving how tough I can be. Um, I spent a 27-year military career um, that did some of everything. Um, and I'm, I don't think I need to prove how tough I am. Um, what I have to do is run a, a humane prison. And it's the easy thing to do is to go in with brute strength and start beating inmates up. That's spineless. That's stuff that I, any one of my staff will go in and beat inmates up. That's not what we do. We are there to maintain safety. Herman said using brute force against prisoners is like fighting fire with fire, and this will only lead to bloodshed. When you beat on inmates, the first opportunity they get, they will take it out on staff. We are severely short of staff. If I was to go in with brute strength and beat inmates up because they were live streaming. Um, right, what were they live streaming? They were live streaming that we had broken toilets. Guess what? We have broken toilets. Um, there was no urgency in trying to get them off live streaming. We had, we had three officers in the unit at that time. Had we gone in there and all we would have done, we would get, we would get some officers hurt, we'd get them taken as hostage, you have to think about these things. Um, what, would, what were they really doing? They were showing the world that we had broken toilets and we had broken sinks. Guess what? Newsflash. We have broken toilets and we have broken sinks. And guess who broke them? Inmates did. Um, so for the people who think I'm just soft on inmates, um, I, I respect that. That's their opinion. Herman said in addition to reducing hostility at the BCF, his aim is to truly rehabilitate inmates. Our goal is to change offending behaviors. That's what we do. Um, the rehabilitation program centers around um, life skills, basic skills that inmates do not have. How to do an interview, how to apply for a job. Those are the things that, those are basic life skills that cost us the government nothing to do. That's what we aim to do. We do not have the monies to generate the big um, uh, warehouses and to do the manufacturing that other prisons do. We don't have the resources to do that. Our thing is to change their mindset, change the way they think, and have them feel comfortable that we're not, we have no black holes anywhere that we're taking inmates in to beat them. We don't do that. That's not what we do, and that will never be done under my watch. The BCF director said his goal is to run a facility that is peaceful for both staff and inmates alike. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. The campaign to see the administration of free sanitary napkins to girls and women in St. Lucia continues as a local women's advocate renews the call for concessions and legislation to be changed on the products. Karen Tobia laments the fact that condoms continue to be given to males free of charge even though sex is optional, while sanitary napkins remain a costly commodity for females who have no say over their monthly cycles. Rochelle Gonzalez reports. 
Women's advocate Karen Tobia is continuing on with her campaign to get St. Lucia to follow in the footsteps of Scotland, who in February 2020 saw its parliament advance legislation that would ensure free universal access to menstrual products in a huge stride for the global movement against period poverty. Tobia reacted to the news last year, expressing excitement over the new feat, as well as high hopes that policymakers would follow suit. However, one year later, with no such advancements being made, she has expressed disappointment, stating that St. Lucian women are victims of discrimination. I keep thinking that women are discriminated against in so many ways, and sometimes we don't even realize it. That's one of the forms of discrimination. Tell me why. When we have sex as an optional thing, I can decide whether I want to have sex or not. I can go all my life without sex if I choose to. Um, we have people who are like that. And yet, condoms are distributed free of charge to men. But sanitary napkins, which are a need for women, are not distributed free at any point in time. Some schools do it, because I, I remember being a teacher at, at, the, comprehensive, at the comprehensive school, and, and we used to have a stack for our students. So there is a, a stack. Some people, some play, business places have it. But in most instances, you have to purchase your sanitary napkins. Tobia said menstruation is not an optional bodily function, and so until this matter is observed by legislators and addressed, she will continue to speak on it. That is not a choice. That is something that happens whether you want to or not, whether you like it or not. You are, during your childbearing years, going to have a period. Um, and so it is, it is discriminatory. It is something that I, that I am going to continue to speak about, that I am going to continue to, to advocate for. I really would like to see one day that the same way condoms are given free of charge, that sanitary napkins will be given free of charge to people. Tobia is one of the brains behind the annual Care Bag Project, which sees caring individuals packing handbags filled with feminine essentials, including sanitary napkins, and the handbags are then distributed to less fortunate women around the island. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. A Creole activity book for children by a local author has been endorsed by the Folk Research Center. The book, entitled Saxa, was written to create an interesting, fun, and easy way for children to learn and appreciate the language. Author Joanna French Leon says that apart from teaching Creole vocabulary, the book deliberately intends to pass on St. Lucian culture. The words which were, which were selected for each letter of the alphabet in the book it's actually words which are specifically St. Lucian or specifically Caribbean. So each word is something that is very nostalgic, very St. Lucian. Um, the example I tend to use is for the letter B, I have B for Boape, right? So with, with that, it allows the parents the opportunity to sit with the child and probably tell the child a bit more about Boape. You know, you can speak about how it is such an important food for the Saint Lucian, um, the typical Saint Lucian family. During Jeune Creole, it is used in so many dishes. We prepare it on a coal pot and all sorts of things. So Saxa really is my effort to immortalize our language, immortalize our culture, and to be very deliberate with passing on our culture to our children. The Folk Research Center says the book comes at a critical time in St. Lucia's history when the country's national language policy is being actively reviewed by the Ministry of Education as a means of establishing a framework for the introduction of Creole into the formal education system. The beauty of SACSA is that both parents, guardians, apart from the children, get to be immersed in that learning process and getting a greater appreciation for the language, its writing system and, and the orthography in a very creative way. And it also helps children better understand at an earlier age um, what the, the, the beauty of the language in, in a, a way that we have not seen before. And more specifically for 2021, FRC is looking to reintroduce some of, some of its educational and developmental programs and resources like these will be very critical to how we advance that. Issue. 
In the book, there are also activities to practice penmanship. The book has activities for to practice shaping your letters, so penmanship, and there is a, another activity for each letter. So you get to practice your colors, um, learning your shapes, um, identifying lowercase and uppercase letters, and of course, coloring the actual item. And that itself is, it also pre presents an opportunity for the parents to really get involved. Leon hopes that the book can be introduced to all schools once Creole becomes part of the curriculum. The book is available in St. Lucia and on Amazon. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News when we return the latest weather report.